we're back in the front of the building. So anyway, uh, we're here to just do a PM. We're going to be doing coil cleanings on all six of these units. So this is a quick clip on how to do that. So first things first, I know you're going to say, oh, you just clean it from the outside. Well, these actually have two coils. There's one on the outside, one on the inside. So we're going to actually pop the tops off of all of them and clean them from the inside out and the outside in. Uh, that's how you're supposed to clean them. Don't be lazy and clean them from the outside. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take all the tops off. So I got all the disconnect shut off. So here we go. So the proper way to clean a coil is uh, take the top off, clean from the inside out. Uh, one of the things that I always suggest doing is vacuuming out all the dirt and the light leaves and stuff with the shop vac. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum all that out first. Okay, so we got her all vacuumed up and then I just kind of vacuumed out the electrical panels a little bit uh, since it's open. So now we're going to go ahead and pre-soak everything. So basically we're going to wash it off with water, get all the big debris off the coils, get it pre-soaked. Then we'll add our coil cleaner and then we will rinse it all off. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pre-soak. Try not to get the electronics wet. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a towel over it. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-soak all these and we'll be back. Okay, so we got them all pre-soaked. So we're now going to put some uh, coil cleaner on them. Okay, so go ahead, use your favorite coil cleaner. Uh, me personally, I like uh, Triple D, but I forget what this stuff is, but uh, Triple D I think is a six to one mixing ratio. So yeah, anyway, um, some people start from the bottom, some people start from the top. I start from the top and work my way down. The way I see it is it'll drip down and I'll get it again, so. Yeah, to me, the going down and up doesn't make sense because if I go from the top, it's going to fall down anyway. So I'm getting, you know, getting double my money. So I like to have it on a nice spray and then I try to get it nice and, you know, even through the whole coil. And I'll do each wall, one wall at a time, just like so. I want to make sure that I get it all in that coil. This is when it's nice to have like an angled nozzle like this. It really comes in handy. I just got this uh, pump sprayer because uh, I lost the fitting for my um, coil gun, the new Calgon coil gun, which is an amazing tool. It's great for this. Uh, however, I lost the quick release mounting. So that's to connect the actual um, the water nozzle part. And I looked online, I could not find a replacement. I'm still looking at other places, but um, I paid about $46 for mine when it was new. And I looked it up because I figured oh, I could just buy another one. But uh, yeah, they're now $86. And then if you want the extension wand, it's like $100, which is like pretty ridiculous to me. Um, so I just uh, decided to just go back to doing it the old fashioned way and using a pump sprayer. Um, I mean, if you're willing to spend the money, I would say the coil gun is great to have. It works wonderfully. It's definitely, I mean, you're definitely getting what's promised. Uh, but it is pricey. So, you know, if you do a lot of coil cleanings, it's totally worth it though. Um, cause then you don't have to pre-rinse. You can just go straight at it and it foams it up. So it gets really in there. Uh, so yeah, I love the coil gun. It's just out of my price range now. It's just, I just don't see the, 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 the value or the, the money is just not worth, uh, the, the value. So, but it could be for you. Um, I don't do a lot of coil cleaning, so. That's pretty much why I decided to go this route. But I did get this DeWalt one. It was about 36 bucks at Home Depot. Um, pretty nice. I like it so far. We'll see how long it lasts. Usually I use the uh, HDX cheapos. Just replace them every year. But I'm hoping this one will last longer than a year. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the coil cleaner on all these coils. And I'm letting it sit for a while. That way it can, you know, do its, do its thing. Um... So what I'll do is I'll start from this side, get these all done, and then when I'm all done with that side, I'll come back over here and then uh, rinse them all off and work my way back. So, you know, you want to be efficient when you're doing multiple coils like this. Okay, so we got them all treated with coil cleaner, and I'm letting it sit for a little bit. And while I was letting it sit, I went ahead and hosed that out, got all the coil cleaner out of it and it's just full of water now. And then um, I bled it, you know, just let water come out until no more soap came out. Uh, it's very important to do that, otherwise you're gonna have to replace that thing every year because the coil cleaner will just eat it up. Um, 
especially if you get the cheaper ones. I don't know how this one's gonna last, but I spend a little bit more. Usually I spend about 10 bucks a year. This one was like 30 bucks. So we'll see if I get some more time out of it, it's definitely worth it. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start rinsing this. Um, and one of the things is, is uh, when it comes to coil cleans, um, you wanna do them properly so you get all the gunk out of them because if these things get clogged up, it can really cause a lot of problems for the system. Also, if, uh, if you're like a residential selling tech, uh, this is actually a great way to build rapport or to build value uh, with your customer. So basically, if you're doing residential, you'll take the whole thing apart, uh, go get your customer, show them how nasty and dirty it is, and then clean the heck out of it and explain your process to them. Uh, and then when it's all super clean, you bring them back out and be like, hey, look at the difference. So they build, you build value in your company and yourself, uh, and then they start to trust you. Uh, you know, because I mean, I've, I've been there. I've been a selling tech before. It, it kind of sucks. It's not for me, but um, uh, you do get paid a lot more that way. Um, I was always honest, so I wasn't the best selling tech because I think, honestly, if you want to be a good sales sales tech, you got to stretch the truth a little bit and you have to convince people. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I just tell them how it is and let them decide. But, you know, you can sit there and try to explain things and educate them that's the word educate them to uh you know do the do the the proper choice which is to fix the unit because ultimately save them money but uh but yeah so this is a good process to adopt if you're a sales technician how many of you are sales technicians um put it in the comments below let me know i'm kind of curious uh if you're just a regular technician uh that's cool too uh, you know, you still want to build value with your clients because you want to maintain your contracts, your service contracts with your clients and show them that you're better than the uh, competition. So, you know, taking pride in what you do is very important in this trade. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, enough on that rant. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start hosing these things off. Okay, so we got it all rinsed out. So a lot cleaner than they were. Some of these are pretty badly stained, but it's a lot better than it was. So anyway, uh, now we're going to put all the tops back on, reconnect all the wires. I'm going to go zip tie happy on these. And then uh, I'm going to push in the contactors of each one just to make sure everything still works. And then we will clean up and get out of here. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.